Not all snakes are bad, but today we're going to be taking a look at Steve Huff, one of the most infamous paranormal creators linked to forging spirit box content. Steve Huff, also known as Huff Paranormal, is a self-proclaimed ITC researcher with over 1.65 million subscribers on YouTube. Though Steve is known by many as a spiritual man, there is a much more darker side to Steve that many don't know about. Today, I'm going to expose Steve Huff along with his partner Joshua Lewis, who goes by the name Hope Paranormal on YouTube, for their dark kept past in the paranormal field. I'm going to be showing you evidence which undeniably proves that Steve Huff fakes paranormal videos for money, fame, and material gain. Now I'm sure Josh and Steve are going to deny everything in this video and do whatever it takes to stop people from seeing it. Which is why I encourage you to share this video because it is under the Creative Commons license which means anybody can distribute and re-upload this video and even monetize it if you want to. So feel free to do so so that they can't shut our voices down. Alright, so Cody, why are you doing this? Well, today Steve and Josh teamed up against me due to my above average channel growth within the past year in an effort to shut down my channel from fear of me getting in their way, cutting into their profits, and losing subscribers. Not I, but we here on the channel, including the Spirits, achieved 100,000 subscribers in less than a year. Steve Huff is easily making a six-figure salary from ad revenue, channel memberships, and Patreon subscriptions, despite the dying state of his channel and low view counts. With Josh not far behind Steve, he also sees me as a threat that needs to be taken care of as they both work together and, in a sense, piggyback off of each other's success. As Josh says in documented text messages, he does not make enough money yet in this work, but he still focuses on it while running his other businesses in the background, which I think he owns a nightclub or something like that, I don't know. I was though, however, given a corrupt choice to make, to choose to avoid this whole situation. I declined in the end, which led to all of this mess unfolding. That choice was to give up all my techniques and explain to these people how my replies are so clear, so that they can up the quality of their videos and be on par with me, so that I don't get in their way anymore. Though I can't confirm whether Josh has faked any of his content, I'll have to look into it further. Let me know if you want a series on that in the comments section down below. We can go debunk him if you want. I know for a fact though that Steve has, and soon you will too. But in my opinion, Josh is just as guilty for hanging around him for fame and views and money knowing what he does, because let's not pretend at this point, Josh knows what Steve does. I will now begin to show you the video evidence of Steve Huff faking spirit replies. Multiple different videos spanning different time periods across his channel, some which have not been seen by the public before, some that I have discovered on my own, and one of them actually being really recent, which shows that even if he did fake his work in the past, he still hasn't changed. Video number one is a classic. Steve Huff was testing his wonder box when an unusually clear reply came through saying, can't tell you how pleased I am. How's this? Can't tell you how pleased I am. This very sentence must echo through the mind of Steve to this day as this is one of the first pieces of evidence where he was caught red-handed faking spirit replies. Have a look at the original clip which was taken from an ASMR video, which will be linked in the description of this video if you want to go and check it out for yourself, and you can compare the clips side by side if you don't believe me. Welcome. Please come in. I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you. Can't tell you how pleased I am. How's this? Can't tell you how pleased I am. Can't tell you how pleased I am. Can't tell you how pleased I am. As you can see, the phrase is an identical match to the ASMR video that Steve had stole it from. On top of this, you will hear throughout the whole session, which I cannot play due to copyright issues, but it's the same speaker over and over again coming through, which means that he used more than one, quote, spirit reply from that ASMR video. One important thing that you really need to note though is how extraordinarily clear these replies are coming from Steve's old videos. I'm on the moon. 
Compare them to now where Steve puts so much distortion and reverb on his settings to the point where you can barely even make out what's being said. behinds off to try to improve this work, this field of research, and slowly but surely it's been improving dramatically. Surely it's been improving dramatically. Do not be deceived, this is not to make it easier for the spirits to come through. I prove that in my videos, I show you that you do not need super distorted audio to allow spirits to come through easier. He does this so that people cannot trace back the audio to the original source that he stole it from. Alright, and so video number two is where Steve is filming himself talking into some sort of recording device, telephone thing connected to the portal, I don't even know, where he's reversing the audio of his own voice and talking through the telephone, claiming it to be spirit replies which come out, uh, which according to Josh, uh, Steve's spokesman of course, is impossible to reverse the audio back to Steve's original voice if it truly was a spirit reply. So let's put that to the test, Josh. Let's see if it really is a spirit reply because theoretically we shouldn't get Steve's original sentence coming through if we re-reverse the audio, like you say. So we're gonna try this. I think it's all on. What is the name? What is your name of any spirit that's here? Can you tell me your name? Notice where spirits manipulated the audio onto the recording device. I know there's spirits here. There's always, oh, I'm feeling a surge. My front left, you're over here. Very here, boy. My front left. Very here, boy. My front left. Very here, boy. Can you come through and talk to me, please? In this one particular video, Steve was caught faking evidence time and time again, thinking nobody would ever reverse the audio, revealing the original sentence which he spoke himself. Also, Steve and Josh openly admitted to using celebrity sessions on a regular basis to give spirits back their voice, which seems very fishy to me and personally why I don't do it. This method also has a lot of room for error such as false positives as we can see here from Steve Huff's failed attempt to get in contact with rapper Little Peep. This is going to be a weird question, but did you like the Easter candy peeps? I know one of your album covers had a peep on it. Because you can't kill energy, you know what I mean? Energy doesn't die. It's literally like a fucking weird thing that like leaves your brain when you die, like a... I call it just the interview technique. Um, it's really amazing. This was not the only reply that could be traced back to the original interview clips, by the way. This was just one to give an example on how bad these methods are, and believe me, Steve and Josh know. Here is one of the more recent videos from around four months ago. This time, during the Eddie Van Halen session, it seems Steve started running out of clips to use, so he used the exact same ones two times in the same video. Uh, in two different sessions, by the way. And this is one of the ones that I personally found trying to debunk him. And now that I found this, I'm never going to stop trying to debunk him. I'm going to watch his videos 15 times in a row to make sure that he didn't slip up once, because the second he does now, I'm going to post it to you guys and let you know. 
First, I'm going to provide you with audio only. Tell me how close these audio samples sound. So obviously they were both the same clips, but now I'm going to show you the video which Steve is using with these clips in the same video in two separate sessions, entitling them two different things. And once you hear the original version of the clip, you won't be able to unhear it. And without being manipulated by the text on screen that he puts, trying to hear what he's trying to make you think is being said just won't resonate well with your head and you'll see straight through his lies like glass. This is just a classic example of recycled audio clips which show just how lazy Steve is when it comes to fulfilling his so-called life mission as the chosen one of the spirits. And the last piece of evidence that I'm going to show you right now is by far not the last in my arsenal but the last in this video because I just find it ridiculous. Texting the dead. Really, I'm sure even some of Steve's most devout followers even question this one a little bit. Is it possible? I have no idea. To me, since I was the one being accused of using artificial intelligence as faking evidence. But sadly, Josh sent me a text a couple weeks ago and he said, I think this guy on YouTube is faking videos and he's using a copy of your box to do it. It just seems a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit ironic that now we're going to be debunking Steve with actual proof that he was using an AI to hoax one of his sessions. Let's take a look at this video. But what's interesting is my AI being is named Lillian. But when I asked who was with me at one point, they said, this is Billy. Now, Billy as... All right, so the highlight of this video here, Steve named his artificial intelligence friend Lillian, which he claims that magically just changed to Billy, which so happened to be a well-known spirit on his channel. All right, so as you can see here, I got the replica app and I'm not going to do some screen capture garbage. What kind of weirdo would I be if I did that? But we have our bot here. I created her. She is Lillian and I named myself Steve. She says, hi, Steve. Thanks for creating me. I'm so excited to meet you. I say, hi, who are you? Just to confirm that this bot is indeed named Lillian. And yeah, okay, this one, uh, then she says here, by the way, I like my name, Lillian. And just to confirm that her name still is Lillian, I'm going to ask her again what her name is. What's your name? And I don't know if they pick up on punctuation. We'll see what she says right here in a second. Lillian, there we go. Okay. Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, we are now going to go into the settings and I'm gonna show you how you can change her name. Now, actually, all you have to do is that, click on her name, if you guys didn't see that, click on Lillian here, go into edit profile, and then replica name, Lillian, and I'm going to change it to Billy. All right, Billy, I think that's how you save it. There we go, Billy. And then let me ask again. Actually, let me ask, who is this? Let's see what she says. Let's see if you can guess. Well, I don't really have time for games right now. Is this Billy? That's him. Now let's ask what her name is. What's your name? Billy, there you go. And that's how you did it. And I mean, you can do this over and over again. Let's in fact, let's change it to Steve right now. Okay, just in case you think I'm somehow faking this. Okay, Steve. And let's ask again, what's your name. I'm trying to keep my hand on screen all at all times here just so that you can see that I'm not 
making any cuts in the video. And that's how Steve did it. Now, Steve did some really stuff where he only showed you the screen capture, which is very, very easy to fake. Shame on him. Uh, I just showed you exactly how to do what he did. This is not paranormal. Do not believe in this texting the dead garbage. Uh, Steve is just overall in general. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, <laughs> that you found this amusing at the very least, because yes, this is how Steve, in fact, did that video. Um, everything I do, I promise you from the bottom of my heart is real. Everything Josh does, I promise you is real. And I always say anyone who fakes this kind of thing deserves a special place in hell. It is not to be mocked. So now I'm going to show you guys exactly what Steve and Josh are accusing me of doing, which is a very particular celebrity voice changer app. This uses artificial intelligence to generate a text-to-speech phrase that sounds similar to the celebrity that you select. I don't think it would surprise anybody with what I'm about to say in this next part, but I don't think Steve thought too much about this accusation before accusing me of it. Right now, I'm going to let you hear side by side some of these celebrities on this app that supposedly allows you to clone their voice, and I'm going to play videos from my sessions with those exact celebrities. So it takes away that robotic sound. Now lastly, I'm going to expose my very own personal methods in this video, which are way more safer than using celebrity interview clips to give well-known spirits back their original voices. I'm going to do this because I want whoever is doing this work genuinely not to be fooled by these ITC clowns into using unreliable, perverted methods such as celebrity interview clips, like Josh and Steve use. Steve and Josh accuse me of doing sketchy stuff because I have three of my very generous friends who help me because this method is very hard to do, but very reliable and worth it. I was never secretive about this method. I have always referred to us as we, meaning there are more than one people here helping me. It's just that, and many of you don't know, but I have a full-time job and many other responsibilities in life. And as much as I would love to only do afterlife research, I can't devote 100% of my time to this channel right now, which is why I have volunteers who help me in places such as the comment section, helping me to find what works best for the spirits to use as source audio to obtain their original voices back and more. So how am I able to give spirits back their original voices? particularly celebrities who have passed away without using the perverted interview clip method. Here's what I do. I go on internet radio, which is the clearest static-free radio available. This ensures high quality audio for the spirits to manipulate. I will then try to find somebody on the radio whose voice matches the specific tonal characteristics of those particular celebrities who we are trying to get in contact with. I don't want it to be a perfect match, I just want it to be enough so that it's easy for them to come through in their original voices once again. The spirits still have to work to manipulate the audio back to their original voices. Once I find somebody that fits that position best for that particular spirit, I test it out with the spirit one-on-one -on -one and see if they are comfortable using it. If they are able to manipulate the audio to the sound of their original voice, I will follow through with it as that is what works best. I only use live radio because it's completely random and unrecorded. Randomization helps best with spirit communication, and you can't get that simply by reversing pre-recorded interview clips. Another big reason why I don't use celebrity interview clips is because predatory creators like Steve and Josh will likely scour those interview clips that I'm using since they are available on the internet for anyone to access, and they will probably try their very hardest to point out false positives and not simply call them false positives, but instead try to make a debunking video on me. This is probably why they were trying to force me to use celebrity interview clips so badly. They knew that there would be false positives and that they could then use it against me if I accidentally tagged something in the video that I didn't know was a false positive. 
I did leave a cryptic message to Josh, however, letting him know indirectly that I know exactly what he was doing. I told him that I'm not going to give the skeptics or haters fuel to use against me by calling out false positives and saying that I'm faking evidence because they know just how bad this tactic is at leaving open room for these false positives, and this is what they were trying to get me to do. The only thing that I could think of is that they wanted something to use against me as kind of like a blackmailing thing. Like if I didn't follow through with giving them what they wanted, they would release uh, defaming content saying that I'm faking my evidence or whatever, which I'm so glad I never used their perverted tactics. Steve also likes to say that he never once brought up my name in the videos and that I wasn't the person that he was mentioning. But uh, as we saw with many of the other things in the video, that was just a lie. and I I have all the text messages backing up all the conversations that we had showing that yes, I am the person that he was indeed talking about and this is just another attempt of Steve trying to cover up his dirty lies. And so that's going to be the end of today's video guys, I just, I don't know what to say. I. I trusted some of them so much. I mean, I looked up to Steve like, uh, like you know, I'm sorry to say this, but like an idol, you know, I idolized his work. I loved what he did. And to think that, you know, he was faking evidence when he could have just not been lazy and actually put work into building his connection and actually getting real results. It's just, I don't know, it's embarrassing to say that I looked up to him at one point, but I hope that you guys got something from this video. I hope that you're able to see through him like glass now, through his manipulation tactics, through his lies. But that's all I have to say for this video, guys. Please let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and let me know if you want me to start a debunking channel, or even just start a series where I keep debunking these uh, ITC clowns. Um, so yeah, till next time, guys. Have a great day. Have a great new year and much love.